We're going to obviously come back to this live, but they're going through the 100 senators at this moment. And I have Hogan Gidley, the White House Principal Deputy Press Secretary, alongside here. Um, Hogan, your, your reaction to how this is playing out right now and uh, Senator Schumer's proposal there. Well, look, obviously I'm not there. I've been over at the Senate pretty much the entire day watching this thing unfold, and it looks like another desperate attempt by the Democrats to try and change the outcome and, and try and sully a, a process that was tainted so badly in the House. And now the Senate is actually giving us a fair shake, a fair trial. And uh, he and the rest of the Democrats are probably upset at the fact they didn't get witnesses in the Senate, which is a ridiculous premise because they had 17 in the House. They could have subpoenaed John Bolton. They didn't. Uh, they had a chance to do more. They didn't. They had to rush through because they said it was in the uh, urgency because of the national security concerns they had about this you know, president. They would say, obviously, that, that John Bolton, there's been new information since that point, and also since that point, he has said that he would be willing to come in and testify. So that's, that's a new set of circumstances that didn't exist then. Right. But what's not new is the fact that Adam Schiff also said John Bolton had no credibility and he was just looking for a new job. So it's pretty rich for Adam Schiff to use this. This is some type of ploy to try and pull in John Bolton when he himself has discredited him on many occasions. And look, that follows a pattern. Anyone in Donald Trump's orbit, they hate. And if they get out and say one negative thing about the president, all of a sudden they're the toast of the town. Adam Schiff is has no credibility whatsoever. He's been caught lying about Russia collusion evidence he didn't have, about his staff talking to a whistleblower. He said they didn't. They did. He made up his enti an entire speech to the American people and to his colleagues in Congress when he tried to pass off his own deranged, demented words as that of the president's. I mean, this guy has zero credibility on this topic whatsoever. So it, it appears that there are Republicans who also want to sort of have their moment on the floor to speak their mind on how they feel about all of this. And we know that there were obviously some, some of them wanted witnesses. Uh, Susan Collins wanted witnesses, Mitt Romney wanted witnesses, and ultimately Lisa Murkowski of Alaska and Lamar Alexander of Tennessee both decided to vote against that. However, Lamar Alexander uh, said that he felt that the president's phone call was inappropriate um, and spoke out about it. So it may be that some of them want that opportunity to say that on the Senate floor. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Well, I, I'm not going to get in trying to get at the head of the senators. I mean, they have their own constituents to answer to, but the fundamental facts haven't changed here. We're not going to have witnesses in the Senate because this is supposed to be done in the House, and it was. Now, they don't like the way they did it, they have no one to blame but themselves. As we move into the Senate, it's a completely different set of circumstances. And as we've said many times, had they decided to vote for witnesses, then we can have some witnesses. But even Adam Schiff made the point yesterday, we can do this in a week. Let's just do this in a week. So let me get this straight. You guys had three months to do it uh, in the House. Do, do it the way you wanted. You completely colored the jury. You did it behind closed doors. And now you're telling us you'll only give us a week and only let the witnesses come forward that you want and not us. They're trying to do it all over again. Uh, the fact is, they ruined this process. And our defense team, lo and behold, finally had a chance to defend this president. And on Monday, let's not forget, Democrats were saying they're never going to get the vote for witnesses. Uh, well, and we got it because uh, the facts prove the president did nothing wrong. What he actually did do was constitutional. It was legal. It was lawful. Right, well, and it was let, on let behalf of the American taxpayer. the account that came out today, which was uh, another account from John Bolton. And, and there's word this evening that they are not commenting on this latest report, which claims that the president asked John Bolton to intervene for these investigations with President Zelensky and that Rudy Giuliani, um, Pat Cipollone, the the defense attorney that everyone's become very familiar with now in this public forum. Uh, they were all in the room at the time when the president was asking this. That is what John Bolton contends. Right. And the president came out immediately and said this wasn't true. This meeting never happened. Would that be and a matter of White House diary record? I mean, wouldn't there be a record that would say whether or not they were all in the room or not in the room? Well, look, let, let's be very clear. What this, what, What's going on here is Ambassador Bolton, who left the administration, has a book to sell. And as soon, look, you know, go back to Sunday evening when the first little news of this uh, uh, allegation broke on Monday morning. This was clearly coordinated. As it broke, the Amazon page for pre-orders of the book went up immediately. A statement from his staff went up immediately. So 
this has all been very planned and very coordinated. And when those statements did come out, which we don't even know if they're true, these are allegations, no one's seen this manuscript, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo came out and said, not true. Uh, Attorney General Barr at the DOJ, not true. Mick Mulvaney said the same thing, none of this is true. So this has become a pattern and a track record. And I, and I, and I hate to say it, but it, it, it's unfortunate because uh, Ambassador Bolton and I worked together in the White House. He and the, relation, uh, the president had a good relationship as well. But so often people try to make money off of this president's name, and it appears that's what's happening again. Well, he, he came out and defended all the people who spoke out from his department, and he said that it was it was not disloyalty. He said it's actually the opposite of that, uh, their decision to speak out. So, I mean, what's clear is that they have very different views of what happened. Um, in the White House. Now, my question is, we all know that after this part of this process is over, and I think, you know, it, it, it seems fairly obvious at this point that there will be an acquittal and, it, and the vote is expected to take place on Wednesday at 4 o'clock, these questions are going to continue to go on and on and on, and even to the point where you could see this issue of impeachment raised again over these same issues because there's no double jeopardy in impeachment. What do you what do you say to that? Well, look, the entire process has been political to this point. Six of the seven managers that Nancy Pelosi put in place all said they were for impeachment before this thing even started uh, months ago. So uh, I think everyone knows what this is, and it's a chance for Nancy Pelosi to try and put her own personal political gain and wants and desires above the needs of the American people. This president, though, has done everything on behalf of the American people. He's worked hard, you see the successes, you see the gains, and that's something Democrats case. cannot contend with. We just want to go back to, to this live. They just finished the vote, and Hogan, I'm going to ask if you, if you can to, to sure. stand by.